Aldous Huxley was an English writer and philosopher. He wrote nearly 50 books. And here's his quote about history. That men do not learn very much from the lessons of history is the most important of all the lessons of history. Welcome to the History Slices Podcast. A mother-son duo discussing awesome bits of history. We prove on every show that history is not boring. Entertaining, yet stimulating. This is History Slices. And now, here's your hosts, Jacob and Rachel. Hi, Jacob. Hey, Mom, what's up? Just, you know, technology, being my friend today. (laughs) Just to clue the listeners in a little bit, we are recording this a different way. We're not sitting across from each other. We are doing this over a Zoom meeting because you're in a different spot. So um, we're testing the technology. We'll see how it goes. And uh, hopefully, hopefully it all works out great. Fingers crossed. So I remember, Jacob, we're talking about Catherine the Great today. Yes. uh, What do you know about her? I think her name starts with a K. (laughs) Uh, You mentioned that she's Russian. I really don't know. I don't know the first thing about her. I'm sorry. That's totally fine. Uh, To her first initial, yes and no. We'll get into that. Oh, I'll see. Don't worry. So, Catherine Great, for those of you who don't know, she is the record record holder for the longest lasting female Russian ruler. Uh, She was Empress of Russia from 1762 to 1796. 62 to 96, 30 something yep. years. Mm-hmm. Uh, so let's talk about her because I think she's interesting. Also, I will say this is going to be a two parter because there's a lot about her. So, oh, that's great. Well, good. You said 1762 to 1796. Yes. Still wrapping my head around that because I'm just trying to think about what I know about what was going on in, you know, the U.S. around that time. So it's always my frame of reference. So, okay, got it. That's our, our independence era. Sure. Well, first of all, a little house cleaning here, if you will. Her birth name is not Catherine, it's Sophie. Oh. Which we'll get into why that changed for all of it, because that's confusing. I'm just going to call her Catherine throughout all of this, but I wanted to address that first off so no one writes an angry comment like her name was originally. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> but She's uh, known as Catherine. Yes. Also, she is not originally from Russia. She's from Prussia. Uh, hmm. which is a country that no longer exists, of course. Is that closer to by Germany? Yeah, it's around like where, not quite where Germany is now, but it's like around that okay. area, kind of Eastern Europe, but not like East, East Europe, if that makes sense. Okay. I know that's confusing, but she was born 1729, just as like a date. And uh, it's not too strange that he became ruler of a country she was originally from. Because the European monarchy, they're always married into each other and all that. We'll get into that in a bit. A lot of queens, I guess, or uh, um, would end up being betrothed to like heirs, but they're like from different countries. It's a whole thing. Right. That's just how it's For done, unity but... and strength and things like that. Yeah, and alliances and all that stuff. So as a kid, she was quite like intelligent. She was very bright as a kid, which isn't that crazy, but I think it's worth noting, you know, like she often butted heads with her tutors and her mother because she kept questing stuff that was like, mm. I was supposed to question that, you know, and her family, it wasn't like super, super high. They're high class, Like they were related to the nobility, but they weren't like royalty or anything, mm. right? They were, they were on the totem pole, but they weren't like super up on the totem pole. Gotcha. That yeah. 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 So her mom, I want to talk about her mom, who's named Joanna. Uh, she is, she's not that great. I don't, th- I don't want to like let my bias see through, but there's some things about her. I'm like, hmm. Uh, so first of all, she wanted a son and got a daughter. So there's Tinson right there, you mm-hmm. know, kind of a classic thing. She also wanted to advance up that totem pole, you know, like get more into higher society than they were. So she's like, well, I have a daughter. I'm going to start pulling strings, calling up relatives, you know, uh, social networking, basically, <laughs> uh, to get out. Hey, I have an eligible bachelorette, I think is the term. Right. And you see, their mother was from a minor branch of the Holy Roman Empire's, like, big collection of families. It's all like a tangled thorn bush of relations. Okay. I don't want to get into it because it's very confusing. Yeah. It's very complicated. But needs to say she's connected. That's the thing it takes from that. So she started to help relatives, and eventually, after a while of doing this, her efforts paid off. So Empress Elizabeth of Russia, 
who is one of the people that um, Joanna having kind of buttering up, saying pictures <laughs> of her daughter, being like, "Oh, she's you know, look at my look at my daughter. She's totally memorable, or whatever the word is." So Empress Elizabeth, at the time, she had a nephew named Peter Ulrich. She became the like the guardian of him, and uh, he was the heir to Sweden. But when he became the ward of Empress Elizabeth, he lost being heir of Sweden wow. and became part of Russia's line of succession. It's wow. a whole thing. Wow. It's a whole thing. It sounds really complicated. It is. I'm trying to simplify it. Yeah. Basically, she had somewhat a ward that was around Catherine's aides that was thinking, oh, hey, here's like a potentially good match. Mm -hmm. Right. Got it. That's what you take from that. <laughs> can, I, uh, can I interrupt with a quick yeah, question? Yeah, of course. So this Empress Elizabeth. Yeah. Did she have, uh, was she married to an emperor or was she the only one making these decisions or, or is it irrelevant? Uh, it, to the story, it's irrelevant. I'm not entirely sure. She was the sole ruler at the time. Okay. So I'm, if she had a husband, he was dead or something like okay. that. Okay. All right. I didn't, I didn't think to look too deep into her. That's okay. But, he, he didn't matter. She was the one in charge. Yeah. As far as, uh, Catherine's story is concerned. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. So. Elizabeth sent Joanna a letter saying, hey, come to Russia ASAP. Obviously, uh, not her words, my words, because they didn't have that term then. <laughs> um, now, Joanna's husband, Catherine's dad, he stayed back in Prussia because of religious reasons, basically. Russia, uh, at least You said time, Joanna's was, dad or Catherine's sorry, dad? Jo uh, Joanna's husband. Oh, you Catherine's might have said dad. that, and I, I was already getting confused. <laughs> No, it's, okay. fine, it's fine. So her husband, uh, Catherine's names. dad, stayed in Prussia. Yeah, for religious reasons, because he was a Lutheran. Oh. And Russia, like a devout Lutheran, and Russia was uh, Russian orthodoxy. Like that was the big theme there. So there was kind of this unspoken acknowledgement of like, we don't want to cause potential tensions in this. And, you know, maybe don't <laughs> try to invite that. I don't know. He stayed back regardless. Okay. Okay. Uh, they had a brief stop, which is a whole thing. We'll talk about that in a moment. And then they went to Empress Elizabeth's court in Russia. And I want to talk about that brief stop. Uh, they met Frederick the Great because uh, it's it's kind of a big thing. Frederick the Great, he was the king of Prussia at the time. And he had heard from Elizabeth that Elizabeth was thinking about marrying her ward Peter to Catherine who was Sophie at the time, don't worry about that. Uh, so basically, Frederick's like, was doing some scouting out, basically. He was like, okay, well, let me, let me meet this, this girl and see, like, if she's all up to snuff and it isn't just her mom putting her on a pedestal that is unrealistic. Yeah, yeah and he was the king of Prussia? Yes. Okay, where, yes. where Sophie slash Catherine is coming from? Yes. Okay. But they all, all the monarchs know each other. Yeah. You know, they're all talking and stuff. Okay. Now, the reason I'm bringing all this up, because normally this would be something that I could cut, right? It'd just be like, and then they had a side thing, and they did the main thing. I want to bring it up because uh, obviously the two of them hit it off, and they went on to, to Russia, right? To St. Petersburg, which was like the capital mm -hmm. at the time, though a lot of stuff was done in Moscow. So don't worry about it. Uh, <laughs> but the uh, there's a kind of a funny story here I want to talk about, because about Joanna, Catherine's mom. So... First of all, Elizabeth, uh, as part of like the arrangements, she gave Joanna like uh, some cast money to kind of deck out Catherine and make her presentable and, and all that. Joanna didn't do that. She spent that money on herself, oh, made herself look really good, you goodness. know, which is nice. Yeah. So the main theme is that they go to meet Frederick, right? Joanna leaves Catherine back at the place they're staying to meet Frederick because he is like, well, obviously he doesn't want to meet. She wants he wants me me I'm the one pulling off this this whole thing you know she's just she's just the the I don't want to say merchandise because that sounds terrible <laughs> but basically you know so you know that she's not important but Frederick the reason he called this meeting was to meet Catherine so yes. Joanna shows up and Frederick is like hey where's your daughter and Joanna's like oh she's sick he's like oh okay oh, the gosh. next day the next day this happens again. And he's like, where's your daughter? She's sick. Hmm, okay. The third day it happens, and he's he's frustrated at this point, as am I reading about this. <laughs> and, uh, so we had to frustrate me. And uh, he he kind of presses the issue, right? He's like, hey, no, 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 no. Where's your daughter? Like, the whole point of this. And Saran's so like, oh, well, she doesn't have any, like, clothes that really fit. Oh, my uh, gosh. 
So French is like, oh, for God's sake. He turns to like his sister and he's like, get, loan her some of your clothes so that she can go, we can talk. Oh uh, my gosh. So like this whole thing. Uh, because she spent the money on herself. Yeah. So they they met. Um, Frederick was really impressed by her because, again, Catherine is a very smart kid and they had a lot of similar interests in terms of like plays and stuff, I guess. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Whatever it is that smart royal people are into as opposed to in the, the 1700s. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ballet. I don't know. I don't know. So they hit it off. They went off to Russia. Frederick wrote to uh, Elizabeth being like, it's legit. You know, she's a good match. And our story kind of properly begins here. And it's it's a bit of a wild one, if I'm to be honest. Uh, so she knew, because Catherine was very smart, she knew that Pierre Ulrich, who she kind of didn't really think too much of, and we'll get into like his whole deal in a moment, mm. uh, she realized that, well, it's not him that I really have to please. It's the Empress. It's Elizabeth. Because she's the one calling the shots here, right? She's the one who... If this goes through, it ends and begins at her, right? Right. So in in pursuit of that, I suppose, Catherine throws herself into everything Russ and she learns the language. She reads up on like the traditions and a religion. Again, Russian Orthodoxy, she's from a Lutheran background, but So she's she really working hard to make this match happen. To impress Elizabeth, yeah. I'd be like, No, 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 I, I you know, I care about Russ, I care about, you know, you people. <laughs> Keep in mind that this is like the opposite of Peter Ulrich. Peter doesn't like Russia. He does. He barely speaks the language. He like he prefers like German or whatever. He wanted to be a Lutheran. Uh, he didn't like care about Russian Orthodoxy. So it's like like night and day basically. And that's like Peter is kind of a, a doofus. <laughs> uh, so but, Elizabeth probably really liked Catherine better than Peter. Or at the very least. Um, there was that difference, at least, yeah. So Catherine, at this point, she gets pneumonia, which at that time in history, deadly disease, like lots of people, or illness, I guess, lots of people died from it. Mm -hmm. So it looked grim. So she recovered, obviously, because he goes on in history to do bigger, better things, well, more famous things. But she um, called for a Orthodox priest to like oversee it and be her, with her and stuff. Her mother wanted to call a Lutheran priest, but she specifically was like, no, 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 uh, Orthodox, Russian Orthodox. And again, she recovered, but the people loved her. One, because of this whole thing, uh, like in her, you know, darkest hours, she turned not to her birth religion, but to like the people's religion, the Russian religion. And I don't know, religion, I don't know the exact differences between these two, but you know, they're different enough, right. I guess. Right. It was reported that she had fallen ill while she was staying up long nights reading about Russia, oh. as he did. So people are like, oh, she loves Russia. So people really like Catherine. This will become important later on. Now, Joanna, Catherine's mom, at this point, she kind of leaves the story because he's hanging around this whole time. And it's a whole complicated affair. Basically, in that so she got busted for court intrigue, I guess. Uh, court he, intrigue? Yeah, yeah, because what it was is that, like... Uh, Frederick the Great, when they were meeting him, he got Joanna to like spy on slash sabotage like this Russian noble dude. <sighs> and she was really obvious about it. It's a whole thing, but like a terrible agent, basically. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, she got kicked out. And um, but I see, she didn't get kicked out, but she almost got kicked out. It was actually Catherine, hands and knees, you know, in front of like Elizabeth being like, ah, uh, you know, like trying to of outs for her and also to like save her own skin too because elizabeth was close to just calling the marriage off it was wow. like a big thing wow but luckily elizabeth catherine impressed elizabeth enough it's like okay our arrangement can stay but joanna's standing at court got dramatically decreased mm -hmm. because of all this she I sounds guess. like such uh, a fool yeah don't play games i guess <laughs> anyway so Catherine, at this point, fully converts to Russian Orthodoxy, like fully. And her name is changed. This is like a, uh, this is when the name change happens. Okay. She went from Sophia to Katharina, that's okay. In English, that's Catherine with a C. So that's why I said yes and no. About oh, that's, the... that is interesting. Because in English, yeah. it can be spelled Catherine with a K or a C. It can be, but all the spellings I've seen of Catherine are with a C. With, so. with this Catherine the Great? 
with this Catherine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Interesting. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, eventually, you know, uh, after a while, a couple of years, whenever, that's less important the exact timing of this, but eventually C and Peter are married. Though Peter, he doesn't spend the night with her. He spends a drinking with his pals and then is like too drunk to like do anything. So this but, is on their wedding or this is just, this, this is on their wedding oh, night. Oh, yeah. geez. So, uh, but they're married. Catch. Yeah. Uh, yeah okay. right. <laughs> so it's official. And, yeah. Peter Ulrich, he is, or is like he's still living. He was kind of dumb. Uh, he didn't really care for Catherine and he had admitted as much to her. Oh. It's like, I don't really, I'm not I to, into that. Uh, he was much more interested in being a giant man child. My description of him. Because what he would do is, and this is after he's married, keep in mind, he'd have his toy soldiers and he'd play games. He'd have his servants, you know, move them around. He'd have his servants dressed up as soldiers and he'd huh. order them around. And they're not actually soldiers. It was like a whole thing. <laughs> uh, and basically being like very immature. And this is very kind of humiliating for Catherine because he's supposed yeah. to be like, you know, they're supposed to be like a... Uh, royalty basically yeah and he's just being a, a big child that's just an embarrassment yeah and this lasted for seven years keep in mind this marriage eventually she did get pregnant uh and after two miscarriages she had a son now it's kind of a historical question as to who exactly the father of that kid is mm. But let's not talk about that. Let's not worry about it. The <laughs> point is they finally have an heir. As far as the rest and people and, and government and nobles are concerned, there's an heir. It's fine. <laughs> like, don't there, worry about that. Do you that know if whole. there was speculation at the time that it belonged oh, yeah. to somebody? There was. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's also like the kid looked like Peter's kid, but because Peter, as far as we know, wasn't really interested in that. And there was this whole thing. We know Catherine also had affairs with other people. That was common with royals at the time. Uh, it's actually, I was going to talk about this later on, like maybe in episode two, but um, she got really slandered in terms of like sleeping around, which she did do. But if you look at like the amount of sleeping around, like the male monarchs did, she did it a lot less, let's just say. Huh, interesting. Still isn't great, but yeah. it's kind of a double standard. Where, Sounds like, like it. Anyways, that whole bit aside, they have a kid. Empress Elizabeth passes away at this point. And uh, Peter Ulrich, who from accounts behaved kind of rudely at the funeral, he became Peter the Third. This is around 1762. Uh, now, Peter the Third, he had some pretty different views and policies than his predecessor. Remember, he wasn't much into matters of state or stuff like that. And his ideas as to like the military and what to do with them were pretty different from the directs in the country have been going, which people were annoyed at. Let me get into a little more detail there. So Russia had been fighting in the Seven Years' War, which, as us Americans, we know that's the war that ended up sparking off a revolution over here, kind of. Anyways, Russia's been was involved in that. They're fighting against Prussia. <laughs> Russia against Prussia. It rhymes. They'd been married yeah. seven years, and they're just finishing the Seven Year War? That's interesting. It is. I don't think there's any correlation, correlation there. Yeah, uh, but it is interesting. I didn't think about that. So they had nearly uh, won their little fight with Prussia. And you have to understand that warfare at the time was seen in a much different light than it is now. Now it's just super serious animosity thing. At the time, it was more of like kind of a nationalistic kind of like wrestling mats, you know, type of a thing. Because war was seen as like a glorious, you know, uh, patriotic thing. World War One did a lot to really change that mindset because people were like, oh, this actually sucks. <laughs> Maybe it's yeah. not so great. Yeah. But it wasn't so much like, uh, you know, there wasn't so much like animosity there, let's say. That's a lot of explanation. Let me get to the, the meat. Russia had nearly run against Prussia. Peter the Third, the new uh, emperor of Russia, the czar technically wasn't an official term at this point, but it was still used. He liked Prussia. Arguably more so than Russia. Wow. They, I know it's confused because they have some more names, but and so he's like, eh, it's okay. We'll pull back. We'll stop fighting you. And basically turned his efforts towards Denmark because he was interested in like Denmark for some asinine reason that's too complicated to explain right now. <laughs> but basically he undid years of effort on Russia's part. And the people, especially the military, hated this because it, it was like, well, we were fighting and dying and all that. And you're just like, actually, nah, it's oh, not good. Yeah. Jeez. Um, it annoyed and frustrated a hell out of people, you know, the military, the civilian populace, and Catherine, who had 
keep in mind for years, Catherine has been trying to be like the model wrestling, right? Like the one that like, Hey, I'm one of you people. I, uh, you know, we're on the same wavelength. She was super annoyed at this. Uh, cause this goes against her whole effort to win the hearts and minds of the people. Cause she's actually smart and knows like that. No one is an Island and needs support to <laughs> yeah. be a, uh, in charge of things. And again, his whole childish behavior, which he was exhibiting throughout all of this, also alienated people as well. Then he tried to secularize the church, and yeah, people didn't like him, basically. Wow, he gave them he lots of reasons, it sounds like. Yeah, and like some of his policies were kind of progressive, but it was like compounded with everything else that it was like, he just wasn't that good of a leader, I don't think. He was very disconnected from yeah. the entrance of his people and his country. So Peter III ruled for six months, Ooh. and then something happened. So to recap, the military, the church, most of the nobility, and the common people all hate him. He's and got a now, pretty big target on his back. Yes, and now he's left Moscow to go fight Denmark for dumb reasons. Naturally, a plot begins to form against him. And you, you can bet your bottom dollar that the much more popular Catherine is involved in this plot. Let's cut right to the, let's, let's cut all the, the fluff. Go straight to the night of June 27th, 1762. So there's these two of these guards, they're on patrol. I don't know their names. One <laughs> of them turns to the other one because he gets spooked or whatever. He's like, hey, is that coup against Peter III still going on? And the other guard who is not in on it is like, what? <laughs> so that guard is arrested. But it's just the one the who beat. asked about the coup. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like the one guy who isn't in on it. But it sets the whole beehive of the conspiracy going, right? Because they're like, oh, we got to act now or else it's it's top, top where we're done for. And uh, Catherine finds out soon after because this was, again, like at night. So when she wakes up, she's like told like immediately and stuff. Meanwhile, Peter the third, he's out of town still. He received, he's like in their summer palace. I don't know. They have a lot of palaces because they're royal and it's a big country. He receives word that there might be a conspiracy going on. And he dismisses that obvious falsehood. He's like, no, of course there isn't. That's a dumb, get out of my sight. So Catherine back, you know, here, Catherine begins going to various barracks and various like uh, uh, military bits around the capital. And the soldiers all declare loyalty to her one by one, you know, like it's, it's group. So now she has a bunch of guards and she goes to the Cathedral of Our Lady Kazan, I believe is how you say that name, where the sea is crowned and declared empress by the Archbishop of Novograd, I believe. It's a place in Russia. Meanwhile, Peter. Wow, so she did uh, all that. Peter was just away and she yeah. just like that. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Peter, he's playing his violin. He has still no idea about any of this. No idea. He's in his own little world. So a messenger, he runs in. He's like, I got word from the capital. You, you know, the emperor must hear this. And Peter, he's annoyed because of the interruption. He's like, hey, I'm trying to play here. What is it? <laughs> but he's like, hey, put the message on the table. I'll read it later. He doesn't. Gosh. Eventually, uh, he decides to go home to like where the, the palace, I guess, that him and Catherine's hair. So he does that. And for some reason, he doesn't have his usual cavalry escort. I guess he just didn't bother or whatever. Now, high-ranking in the capital, meanwhile, high-ranking members of the church nobility, they're all beneath the knee. They're all like, yes, you're our new empress. Yes. Uh, she makes a big speech about how she's doing all this to protect Russia from foreign powers and foreign religion, which is interesting because she is a foreigner from a foreign religion. Uh-huh. But let's not talk about that. It's okay. It's fine. So does Peter stumble upon her speech or something? She's giving a speech? <laughs> well, we're, we're getting to it. Peter arrives at their home and no one's around because, of course, they're, they're not. So he's all in like a like a hissy fit because he's like, where is he? Is he supposed to be here? She's, you know, spoiling my, my day. You know, he's yelling at his servants, you know, basically being a, a brat. <laughs> so there's a passing sip that's delivering fireworks for the celebration. For the new oh my gosh. royalty, but they don't know what's going on because that order was placed super early on in the day, like before all this stuff is really going down. So they're like, "Yeah, something's going on at the capital. We don't really know. We're just told to deliver these fireworks." <laughs> and Peter's like, "What? Like, what's going on?" Like he's just very confused and out of it. So recap time: Catherine has the church, 
the nobility, the people, and the military on her side. But Peter still has to formally abdicate. Uh -huh. You know, he still has to give it up himself. So she sets out with her forces to go find and catch them in order to, like, force this, basically. Right. Now, Peter, who by now had to have known that something was terribly wrong, <laughs> so that God horribly awry, he tries to hide away on this island fortress that he believed was still loyal to him. It wasn't because uh -oh. uh, the head of the Navy, it, it was like kind of funny. He sent out a messenger and they're like, yeah, they're still loyal to you. It's like, okay. And then the time it took to get there, the head of the Navy swear allegiance to Catherine. <sighs> it was like just this whole thing. So he is pretty ticked about all of this that's going on. He's pretty frustrated. Can He's you pretty imagine angry. having the rug yeah. pulled out from under you to that extent? <laughs> right? Yeah. So he writes a letter to Catherine. He's like, my bad. <laughs> I'm sorry. You know, like, hey, maybe we can make this work. You know, asking for forgiveness, saying, hey, we can serve the throne. It's okay. It's fine. And she's like, no, no. Because, of course, she'd say no because he's incredibly unpopular. She yeah. is incredibly popular. He's given her no reason to be on his side because he's been a jerk this yeah. whole time. Yeah, oh my gosh. Finally, Peter formally abdicates. Basically, he's forced into it, but he's like, well, there's nothing else to do. And that thus begins the reign of Catherine the Great, Empress of Russia, which we'll get into all of her the roller coaster of her reign next week. That We're sounds like that sounds week. like a really great stopping point and what an interesting build up. Right. Very cool. <laughs> I love how smart she is. And he just seems like a, a comical person, like buffoonish. Very good. I loved it so far. I can't wait to hear the rest of it. Well, you'd be surprised how committing monarchs not just in that time, but like even later on, are not great leaders, but because they're born into it, yeah. they're kind of like that's the same thing with like the French Revolution, uh, Louis the uh, what number? <laughs> <laughs> Louis the something, uh, some number. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I can't remember. Fourteenth uh, or whatever. He uh, totally not a good ruler. Like it wasn't like necessarily a bad guy. And I do feel a little bad for Peter in the story, but it just wasn't a good leader. And, you know, that was going to happen eventually. I feel like. Yeah. It's really interesting because you're, you're really forced into that position, whether mm -hmm. or not it's in your makeup to, to hold such a position. We all have different gifts. And like, if that's yeah. not your thing, it'd be terrible. Tough luck. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and Catherine, I will say, and we'll get more into this next week. C is a um, interesting figure in terms of not morality, but in terms of how to judge her, you know, because I don't think she's a good person, but I don't necessarily think she's a bad person. Uh, C is one of those people who is like really intelligent, really likes the enlightenment, which is going on. You know, she was friends of Voltaire, mm -hmm. you know, she's like, yeah, power to the people, direct like democracy, all that type of stuff. But she was also an autocrat. And she's like, well, hold on, hold on. Like, yeah. let's, let's not get crazy yeah. here. Uh, she sounds pretty so, manipulative. Mm -hmm. So there is definitely, uh, uh, she did some things in her reign that were not okay, but she wasn't the worst ruler in the world, let's say, I guess, which is kind of hard to judge, but I'm, you know, trying to be impartial and all that. Yeah. Oh, I can't mm -hmm. wait to find out how it all went down. Uh, it's going to be fun. But yeah, so I want to talk about her because I knew that she wasn't, as far as like interesting historical people, yeah, we don't really hear too much about her, at least not in this country. I'm sorry, in Russia, it's a different story. But uh, yeah, I thought that was interesting. It makes me wonder more about Russian history and like how many emperors slash czars or whatever there have been since then. And, you know, I, I, I just don't have the, the backdrop for the history, but that's very interesting. I can't wait till next week, Jacob. Awesome. Yeah. I'm uh, glad you enjoyed it. I hope our audience did too. I hope so too. And fingers crossed that the audio comes out okay on this. And Hopefully. if it doesn't, we'll be, uh, we'll be changing something up next week. Thanks for bringing us a great story and a great lesson today, Jacob. My pleasure too. Thanks for, uh, thanks for stopping by and listening. Until next time. Bye. Confucius once said, study the past if you would define the future. You've been listening to the History Slices podcast with Jacob and Rachel. We hope you've gotten some useful information from the show. We hope we made you think, and we hope you were entertained. We know we had fun, and we'll be back soon. But in the meantime, hook up with us on Facebook at History Slices and on Instagram at History Slices Podcast. Make sure to like, rate, and review the show. 
and tell a friend about the show. That'll help us out, too. One more quote before we go from Michael Crichton. If you don't know history, then you don't know anything. You are a leaf that doesn't know it's part of a tree. Till next time, this is History Slices, signing off. 